number eight, the structural engineer suggests that uh, to make your uh, schematic design for the new Minneapolis Public Library economical, we will need to have a soil capacity of at least 3,000 PSF. The soils report uh, has the following information. Uh, talks about organic material at the first six inches, uh, silty sand until about 18 inches, uh, sand a little bit after that, uh, and then sandy gravel, gravel and stone, and bedrock uh, down below 32 feet. Uh, and so we have a couple of different pieces of information in here, but what we're looking for is trying to figure out uh, what is the best depth to choose uh, for the bottom of the footing. So uh, where does the footing need to go in our excavation in order to be a viable and smart and logical uh, spot for this uh, set of information? Um, so this is an, kind of an example where there, this would probably be more like uh, one of the case studies where there would be a soils report, there would be uh, some uh, zoning information, there would be some other stuff, it would be a separated out pieces of information, and this would be one of many questions you might get. Uh, and you'd have to analyze that information and make sort of logical decisions. So we've kind of crammed it together into one question. Um, and this is a little bit of a trick, uh, but the sort of situation here is we're looking for 3,000 PSF. So that's pounds per square foot. So if I have a load coming down through a column, through a bearing wall, uh, I can add up all of the dead load and the live load. We can figure out what that total load is coming down through my structure and I need to have enough capacity in the soil to give back at least that amount of load. If I have more load than the soil capacity, then when I build that structure, it's going to just start slipping down in, it's gonna, you know, imagine you take a pencil and you push on it into the soil, uh, the, the point of the pencil is gonna go right into the soil. If I don't have enough capacity of the soil uh, to push back, uh, given the load coming down. So I'm always trying to balance the amount of, uh, uh, like choose the right soil depth that I'm gonna get the right amount of uh, PSF, the right amount of pounds per square foot of ability to push back as my building load comes down and uh, presses downward. So they've asked for 3000 PSF. That's actually a relatively low number for an institutional building. It would probably be higher, but I just chose that to make this question work a little bit better. Um, so we look on our soils report uh, and we find that our 3000 PSF is right there. And we can do that in the sandy soil uh, anywhere uh, right in that range of one and a half feet to two and a half feet uh, below, uh, below grade. So this, uh, the, we are 30 inches uh, below grade in order to put our footing. But, and here's the tricky part, you also had to realize that this is Minneapolis. Uh, and Minneapolis is a very cold climate, and the PSF is not even the driving source of the issue. In this case, the issue is actually about frost depth. If I put the footing at uh, 30 inches or two feet below grade, uh, it's going to get cold enough in Minneapolis that the ground will freeze down that depth and actually freeze underneath our footing and through frost heave will lift up because when uh, the moisture in the soil gets cold enough, it freezes, it expands just like it does in your refrigerator when you make uh, ice cubes, it'll expand and it'll, it's a very strong uh, expansion and it'll literally lift the building up. Now it'll only expand a tiny amount. Uh, so it's not like it's gonna you know, throw it out of the soil or something like that, but it'll expand it a little bit. And then and when it unfreezes, it'll let it go back. And then it'll expand it a little bit and then it'll let it go back. And the constant expansion uh, and, and contraction, expansion and contraction will eventually work the building right up and out of the soil. It might take years, uh, but uh, that's the kind of problem you would have, which is why we have the idea of frost depth. A cold climate, I'm gonna need to go deeper than uh, the 30 inches that the sand is gonna give me. Um, and I actually don't know for sure. I thought I knew, but then somebody questioned me and I realized I wasn't 100% sure. Um, but I believe Minneapolis is D 48 inches uh, for frost depth. So when you look at the answers, the clue is there in that answer D, it actually says uh, the uh, 48 inches for frost depth and to sort of clue you into the idea that uh, there are other issues involved, not just the PSF. Uh, so would I go the 24 inches for the uh, 3000 PSF? That would get me enough PSF, that would get me enough structural capacity from the soil, 
but it would be too high up, too close to the to the grade, uh, and would likely freeze and cause problems. Uh, would 32 feet down to bedrock uh, uh, for the best capacity? That would be awesome, but it's going to be much, much, much more expensive. Uh, I'd get 10,000 PSF. That's way more than I need. Uh, so that's certainly a reasonable answer, but it's not the logical answer uh, in this situation. Uh, 36 inch for the well-drained sandy gravel. Uh, sandy gravel being well-drained might be useful, but it's not the key running point uh, of what we're talking about here. Really in a cold climate, that's gonna be the deciding factor. Uh, or if there's a basement or other things that are design reasons why we'd go down lower, but uh, the height of uh, the, the depth, excuse me, of the uh, footing is about the frost depth until I get into places where uh, frost depth is just not an issue, uh, say uh, Alabama, Florida, New Orleans, uh, Arizona, things like that, uh, where it's just not likely to get that cold for that long. It takes quite a while. It's not just a one-time cold, but it has to be cold for a while uh, for that to be meaningful. Um, and that frost depth uh, uh, becomes uh, the driving force until you get to those parts of the country that the frost depth is maybe 12 inches or zero inches or something like that because it just doesn't get that cold, at which point then just the capacity would be the driving force. So guys, this one here, um, uh, presumably Mike would, would agree with this. This is going to be one of those that, yeah, they, uh, so many of you have been asking um, uh, how would you know 48 inches is actually the right answer? And so in this case, in the real exam, there probably would be some information about that. Um, and Mike, to, exactly. your, um, to your to your question, Philip, presumably from Minneapolis, says that, yes, you're correct. It's cold as hell there, and it's uh, yeah. 48 inches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Chicago gets to is typically 36. In certain Chicago areas, it's actually 42 um uh which is deep enough uh but it's always a little bit colder in minneapolis and so yeah they have a 48 inch oh, that's great i'm glad you checked uh, i appreciate that uh, i thought it was right but i wasn't 100 percent sure um yeah so like i said at the beginning of this question this is likely a sort of condensed version of a uh case study type question um, which uh would have more multiple pieces of information attached to it 